lot of interruptions and hiccups. But for me personally, I like them because it just means that you are doing the right thing. Because when you aren't on the right track, and you aren't doing not all the time, but you know what I mean. When 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 you when you're not living right or you're not doing something that's gonna uh, uh, change or sh you know help the kingdom, you know, because it's all about building up the kingdom. The enemy has no problem with you. He doesn't bother you. But when he bothers you all the time and he, he's trying to nick everything that you're trying to do when you're trying to move positive in a righteous way, that means you're effective. Amen. So that's all that means. I'm effective. I love it. I love it. It's all good. So today I have a word. Um, it's it's deep. It's deep. When I was praying and asking God for a word, um, it's going to be a lot of reading today. I'm going to read a lot of the word. But um, when I was praying and asking God to bring forth the word, I always try to seek his face. And, you know, it's it's not about me. Even in the beginning, you know, maybe I, I, I was trying to be this next preach, big preacher or whatever it is. And the more and more as I'm mature in my faith and in my walk with God, I see the encounters that he has me have daily. And to be honest, if I had a big, big platform or doing certain things in a certain manner, I wouldn't be, be able to be as effective as I am on a day-to-day -day basis with everybody that I get to do. So for me, um, this is a blessing. I don't take it lightly. But when I do seek his face, I ask him for a word that is going to benefit the souls of the kingdom. That's going to be a transformational word, you know, um, something that's going to resonate in the spirit. And as I was reading through some of my um, notes that I previously took, because I'm always in the word and always taking notes, I ran across um, the story about Stephen. And, um, you know, some say Stephen, most say Stephen. And um, I had came across these notes that I had wrote previously in it. And it's, you know, basically the title is, this isn't for me. This isn't for me. Going through the fire to someone else. Going through the fire so someone else won't get burned. This isn't for me. So, you know, I um, spruced it up a little bit. And, you know, this was like, um, uh, maybe I want to say a year or two ago when I wrote this and you know I did some more uh um reading because you know we need to be reading ourselves and and I just want to encourage you all to it's great that we all get together and we do this but I want to encourage you all to to read the word for yourself to get to know God for yourself um the bible uh, my kids call it what they learned at our church um basic instructions before leaving earth and that is so true you know everything we need I mean from money to relationships to storms we're going through to faith you know to strengthen our faith day-to-day -day things, day-to-day -day things. I'm talking about even through the littlest things, even for those people that are married and having orgies and, and inviting people in the bedroom. Hello? They talk about that too. You know, it, everything that pertains to this world, the Bible talks about. So I just want to encourage you all to read the word, get to know God for yourself, because anybody can preach anything to you. I can say anything to you and manipulate the word. Your pastor, believe it or not, can say anything to you and manipulate the word. So it is powerful and it's essential to life that you read the word of God for yourself, that you get to know him for yourself, because you can't really have that real encounter, that real intimacy until you pick up the word of God and read them for yourself. And, you know, I get a lot of times people say, foul, I, I, I just don't understand it when I do pick up the word. I, I don't know what it's, you know, what it's saying and what it's pertaining to. I always try to tell people, either you, you know, start from the beginning or go to Proverbs, because Proverbs is the book of wisdom. You know, um, David's son, Solomon, he was very wise. And it gives you um, an insight on how to use your wisdom and how to understand the word of God. And the best thing to do before you read the Bible, and this is the best thing to do, is to pray. Pray and ask God to open up your mindset, to, to, to help you understand the mysteries and unlock the metaphors and everything that's in the Bible. Tell him to unlock it, that you want to have an intimacy with him. The Bible says when you ask, you, you shall receive. When you knock, the door will be open. Amen? So a lot of people don't understand that, that there is um, effective power in prayer. That's why I'm so big on prayer. When anybody asks me to pray, I pray right there on the spot. My kids will tell you, I do not jive. I sit there and I pray because there is power in prayer. You want to see things change with your spouse? You want to see things change with your children, with your family members? Don't fight all the time. Don't keep nagging them and keep saying the same old things. Give it to God and pray. 
Pray, seek his face and pray and he will change things. I'm telling you, I am a living testimony of the power of prayer. It is sometimes that I want to tell you how powerful prayer is. And you might think I'm crazy, but I'm being real. There's certain people that be like, oh, I want to come visit you. Um, some might even say, I want to come spend a night with you. Or uh, I'm down and out on my luck. I want to live with you. And this is deep right here. And I ain't being funny. I'm being real because how many of you guys know I'm not no phony person. Even before I got saved, one thing about me, I'm real. I'm not going to. I'm not going to jive. You know what I'm saying? And um, before they would come, I would pray. And I would say, God, um, if they're not coming with the right intentions, if, um, you know, if they're going to be a distraction and not add into the kingdom and try to distract me for what you have doing or, you know, take my peace or the children's peace, you know, um, amen. I'm so glad your connection is back. I say, don't, don't allow them to come or, you know, intervene. Show me, you know, give me discernment. Show me what their motives are. And, um, amen. Sometimes they won't call. They won't show up. They'll be like, um, something came up. I can't come. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He answered that prayer. Something as, as, as little as that, something as little as that. I mean, praying so somebody won't come in over your threshold that shouldn't belong. That's how powerful prayer is. So I just want to emphasize on reading the word for yourself, reading the word and the power of prayer. I'm telling you those two things right there, those two things, those are your armor. Can't, the devil can't do nothing with you when you know the word, because how many of you guys know he know the word when he, when, 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 when Jesus Jesus was in the wilderness and the Bible said he was led to be tempted. You know, sometimes the Lord allows certain things, you understand? So we could be strengthened in our faith. Amen. So when he was led to be tempted, um, the devil knew the word. He spoke the word to him. He was testing him with the word. So you got to be real careful. This is a spiritual warfare that we live in, you know, and I'm not trying to scare people that's not really in too deep with the word, but it is what it is. It's a spiritual warfare. You have to be careful because the, the, the deception is real, you know, and, and, and um, you get caught up, you get caught up. That's why I say, know your word. So you know, the fruit, Good morning, Tyrone. Good morning. Good morning. Um, so, you know, the fruit, you know, so, um, so you can be effective, you know, and this is not the word today. This is just some free, some free nuggets right there that God is having me drop on and drop to you guys. That's in my spirit. But I just really need you guys to know the importance of the word, the power of the word, because when somebody tries to say, yeah, what about your Jesus? This and that and the third, you can't fully back yourself up. If you don't know the word, if you don't know what you're backing up, you can't just be like, you know, I, I love the Lord and that's it, which is true. We love the Lord, but we want to be able to explain why he loved the Lord, what he does for us. You know, you, and then the Bible says that there's some people that's in church, you know, in Corinthians, he says that there's some people that's in church that the enemy has sent that's disguising themselves as angels. So you got to be careful. Hallelujah. I feel that one right there. I feel that one right there. You got to be careful because there's people in a church that's acting like they're for Jesus and they're far from Jesus. They're in there shouting. They're in there praising. They're in there taking communion. Amen. And their hearts are far from the Lord. So you want to be careful. You want to read that word for yourself. You want to get to know Jesus for yourself because you don't want to be deceived. Amen. So we're going to get into the word because I know everybody has to go to work and um, I know for me, my children are off, but you know, people got things to do. So again, we're going to, this, this title is, this isn't for me. We're going to start with Acts um, chapter seven. I'm going to read verses 54 to 60. Before I read, I just want to give you a little bit story behind it. Basically, this is Stephen. Some say Stephen, most say Stephen. Um, the Jews um, had captured him. He was a, a, a mighty man of the Lord. Um, he did miraculous things on account of God. He spoke um, wisdom on account of God. And you know, um, how many people know that the Jews, the religious people, not the people who have an intimacy in a relationship with Jesus, but the religious people always want to cast a stone. And um, you know, they, they, they try to... They captured him and um, they they wanted to kill him. They wanted to kill him because of the things that he was speaking because it goes against with the things that they were doing. And they even went as far as um, read your Bible. Um, they went as far as getting some people to conspire against him and, and make lies towards him so they can capture him. You understand? Sometimes how we, we, we come to do kill, steal, destroy. So, uh, uh, and, and lie. So, you know, those are the, the attributes of the devil. So, um, you know, they, they, they captured him and, 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 um, was trying to take him to throw him in prison and however, and, um, you know, um, was forced execution, um, against him and 
he basically was telling them how every time a righteous person comes, a prophet comes, that they're always against him. You know, he started giving them a list of things of all the forefathers that came before him, even Jesus, and how they was against him. So now right here, we're looking at the stoning of him. It says, when they heard this, they were furious. That's when he started telling them about themselves. They were furious and gnashed their teeth at him. But Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, looked up into heaven and saw the glory of God. And Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see heaven open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. At this, they covered their ears and yelling at the top of their voices. So they don't want to hear him. How many people know nobody wants to hear the truth? Everybody wants to be lied to. Everybody loves that manipulated word. Nobody loves spirit and truth because when you have spirit and truth, you have to be accountable for how you're living. Anyway, um, they covered their ears and yelling at the top of their voices. They all rushed at him, dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. Meanwhile, the witness laid their clothes at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning him, Stephen prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he fell on his knees and cried out, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he fell asleep and Saul was there giving approval to his death. Mm, mm, mm. So... For the beginners and the people that are not seasoned in the word would say, see, I, I, so wait, why did he have to die? Da, da, da. First of all, we all have an exp expiration date. We all have an expiration date. Thanks to, you know, Adam and Eve. That's a whole other story. But we all have an expiration date. But how many do you know that we all have a purpose? The Bible said we are uniquely made. Each and every one of us have a purpose. So for Stephen... He lived his purpose. Amen. He was a mighty man. He, um, he spoke the word of God. He actually, he, the Bible said he did miraculous things. So that means that Stephen probably was healing people. He probably was calling things that, that wasn't seen as, as so as if they was seen, you know, he had power. So when his time came, he died for the sake of the word. Amen. So he lived the purpose. Okay. And that was his ending. Of, of, of his demise, but there was a purpose there, okay? Sick, the connection is weak. That's because this word is fire right here, but we're going to talk it through anyway. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. So, being that he was stoned, the Bible says that Saul, a young man named Saul was there. Now, Saul, who named later gets converted to Paul, who wrote a lot of the New Testament, um, he hated Christians. This is a man who hated Christians. Good morning. This is a man who hated Christians. And, um, you know, anything he can do, kill them, ridicule them, whatever he had to do to demolish a Christian, that's what he did. But how many of you know that sometimes what you go through, it's not for you, okay? So as Saul, as Stephen was being uh, um, stoned to death, um, Saul was there, who later name is transformed to Paul. He was there. So he was there for a reason. It wasn't a coincidence, okay? Things don't happen to us just for a coincidence. And what I love about Stephen, even at the time of his death, he knew that he was going and, you know, he saw heaven open. He saw God, God was pleased with him. Jesus was standing right by the, by the right hand side of God. And, and he, and he saw them before he was going into his glory. And he still had the time to say, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I feel God on this. He still had the time to say, God, please forgive them. Forgive them for what they're doing to me. Forgive them. That is powerful. Even at, at, at the time that his enemies was, was killing him and he performed miracles and signs, he probably could have cast something out. He probably could have rebuked them. But he, he said, no, I'm going to go through this. I know it's my time. I live my purpose. I did what I was supposed to do here on earth. But God, please forgive them for they not know what they're doing. Powerful, 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 powerful. So his character and him staying in character, even at the end, said a lot for the people who was watching. And who and what are the odds that one of the persons that was standing there, okay, will be Saul, will be a man who would later then go after God's own heart. But at the time, he was conflicted and the enemy had him. So not only is he there, but he is chanting them on. Kill this man. Kill this man. He, the Bible said he gave approval, right? So now we're going to go down to Acts chapter 9. Like I said, I'm going to be reading a lot because it's not all about, you know, a lot of preachers and teachers, uh, uh, evangelists, they get caught up in wanting to hear they self speak. It's not all about us sometimes. It's the power of the word. So now we're going to read Acts 9. It says, meanwhile, Saul was still breathing 
out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. He went to the high priest and asked him for letters to to the synagogues in Damascus, so that he found any any there who belonged to the way, whether men or women, he might take them as prisoners to Jerusalem. As he neared Damascus on his journey, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? He said, he says, who are you, Lord? Saul asked. So now this is a man who was living for the devil, right? He was killing and trying to persecute anybody who loved the Lord. He was so, he was so uh, um, motivated and, 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 and um, ambitious about what he was doing. He went to the priest and asked him, give me letters. I need to know who's, who's in this town, who's, who's loving God. I don't care if they're men, women, whoever, right? This is how uh, 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 malicious this man was, right? But look how, and this is what I love, for the people who say there's no power in the word, for the people who act like they don't know Jesus, you have a real encounter. Let something happen to your children, your family members. Let something happen to you. Let you be toe to toe with God. The first thing he says, who are you, Lord? He knew. He knew it was God he was having an encounter with. Amen. He knew. He knew. He knew. Even though he was killing them, even though he was, at, he, he was, the devil had him so much, the enemy knows who the Lord is. Amen. So there's power in the word. He knew. And then it says, I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. He replied, now get up and go into the city and you will be told what you must do. The man traveling with Saul stood there speechless. They heard the sound, but not see, but did not see anyone. Saul got up from his God, Saul got up from the ground when when he opened his eyes he could not see nothing so they led him by the hand in Damascus for three days he was blind and did not eat or drink anything in Damascus there was a disciple named Ananias the Lord called to him in a vision Ananias yes Lord he answered the Lord told him go to the house of Judas on straight street and ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul for he is praying in a vision he has seen a man named Ananias I'm probably chopping up the names but it's all good come and place his hands on him to restore his sight Lord Ananias answered I have heard many reports about this man all and all the um, harm he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. And he has come here with authority from the chief priest to arrest all who call on your name. But the Lord said to Ananias, go, this man is my chosen instrument to carry my name before the Gentiles, who are you and I, the kings and before the people of Israel. I will show him how much he must suffer for my name's sake. We're going to stop right there. Whoa. Mm, Jesus, Jesus. That is powerful. Oh, it's so much in that we can't even touch. So I'm going to stay, I'm going to stay focused on the word. I'm going to stay focused on this isn't for me. Okay. So now the Lord has blinded him. He can't see. Now he's trying to show him not only, not only did he uh, have an encounter with him. Now he, he needs a miracle. Amen. So how many people know there's power in your accounts and your accounts with Jesus. So now he needs a miracle. He needs to, he, 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 you know, God wants to show him his power and how effective he really is. And why the saints really was praising him. Amen. He wants to show him these people that you were killing, these people that you were tormenting or because of my name's sake, this is why they were following me. This is why they love me. Here goes your accounts and now you're going to adore some of the things that you were doing to these people. You're going to adore it. Okay. Oh, Jesus, 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 Jesus. I want to tell you something. Life isn't fear. Life isn't fear. And everything that happens, it, it you know, we always, we want to blame somebody and everything is not, oh God, oh God, oh God, you know, and, um, sometimes life is a result to the things that we do, the people that we around. And sometimes, you know, it's the enemy and, you know, and, and most of the time God allows things to manifest because sometimes it's not even about you. It's about who is watching you. 
who is around you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We don't never know who's around. We never know who's watching. And how you handle your day-to-day -day situations, how you handle the things that you are going through will strengthen somebody else that needs you. Okay? Who, what are the odds that when Stephen was taking his last breath and he was being ridiculed and, 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 he, and, he, was, and, and he was about to die, that Saul would be there? And I believe in my heart why God had saw them was to show him how much people love him and the extremes and measures that they will go for on the, on the sake of him. So when he had his encounter, he now can relate to why Stephen reacted and did the things that he did. Why, did, why he stayed in character and he knew that the Lord, even to his death at his back. You understand what I'm saying? It was very important that... He was there at that time. So when he, when Paul, when when Paul, when Saul, later named Paul, had his encounter, it all made sense to him. Amen. And now this man who once killed Christians and ridiculed Christians, now he has an encounter, and now he's on the same path and has to endure that. Okay. You never know why people are watching. When, when, when God called my husband home, people wanted to see, how is this girl going to handle that? This girl's not even 30 years old. She has three children. This man was getting all that money. They was living that lavish life. How's she going to handle that? What's she going to do now? What's she going to do now? But by the grace of God, I handle that in some. And, 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 my, and some might say I'm living better than I was living when my husband was around. Amen. Don't get me twisted. I miss my husband. I miss my man daily. Because that man, that's why I, to this day I'm by myself. Because those, those shoes, those are some big shoes. I had a good man through the ups and downs, took care of me. Okay? Through the ups and downs. But glory to God that the strength that God has given me. The peace that God has given me, the beautiful children that God has given me from this journey, I was able to endure that through the strength of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And those that are watching, those that seek the power, seek the things that God has did through me, are able, are able to live, are able to breathe, are able to be restored because they see what I endured. Hallelujah. This walk ain't easy. This ain't an easy walk. But I endured it, and I keep my head up, and I trust in God wholeheartedly because I know what he did for me and my children. That's why I wrote that book, and it's not all about the money. It's not all about the money from the book and the profit. It's because I need you to see what God has done for me. That's why I'm in tears right now because every time I think about what I've been through, and I think about what these kids been through, and I think about how we still standing, how we still standing, how we still happy, how I still grace of God. Hallelujah. That he can take the things that me and my children been through and that he can keep me sane. I have women two times, ten times my age tell me, I don't know how you do it. I don't know if I can do it if I lose a spouse. I was with that man from 19 to 27 years old. But I did it. In and out of foster care. But I still will not bitter. I still keep my head up. You will never know my struggles unless I tell you. I'm still, I'm still gracious to people when I, when I meet people. When people have an encounter with me, their encounter is real. They see Jesus when they see me. Because everything about me speaks righteousness. Hallelujah. Everything you go through, sometimes it ain't just for you. Stop always saying, why me? Why me, God? Yes, you. Why not you? Why not you? Why not you? You keep saying, God, use me. You keep saying you want to be effective for the kingdom. Then you got to go through some things. You got to go through some things. And God's going to walk you through it. He going to be there for you. He going to be there for you. But you want to be effective? You want to you wanna be, you wanna have your part in the kingdom? What you think it's going to be peaches and cream? It's not peaches and cream. But do I get through it? Do I sleep good at night? Yes, I do. Because my faith is strong. So when a bill is due, when a kid is sick, I had a sick daughter in here. Nobody knew why she was sick. Y'all don't know what I go through. I still kept my head up high, knowing that God would get us through this, anointing her head with oil, encouraging myself. I got people back betraying me every day, jealous of me. They don't even know why they jealous of me, lying to me, lying on me, stealing from me. You ain't the only one that go through things. But the, but the truth of the matter is God will see you through. He will have your back. 
I believe it's Psalms 38. 16 or 18, don't quote me on it, or Psalms 35. It says, many are the afflictions of the righteous. The Bible don't lie to us. Stop, you know, stop listening to them people that saying the Bible is fake and the Bible, the white man, and, and, and trying to keep you from what? The Bible talk about love. The Bible said many are the afflictions. He didn't lie. He kept it real with us. The, I, the most honest thing that's in this world is the Bible. Be careful who you're around. Be careful what you're consuming in your ears. But I'm telling you, the walk is not easy. But when you're a righteous person, you have a whole army with you. And that's Jesus. He got your back. He got your back. And, it, and, and it's not in vain what you're going through. There's somebody that's watching you. There's somebody that has what you need. It's somebody that has what you need. So put that S on your chest. Count it all on joy. And know that you will get through it. Know that you will get through it. If I didn't have the testimony that I have, how can you be healed? How can you see how good God is if I didn't go through the things I went through? So don't be, feel pity for me and my children. Don't be like, oh my gosh. You know, yeah, I, I feel bad sometimes, you know, that they father and the physical isn't here. But we don't, you know, not to be funny and say anything, we don't know what's in somebody's heart. We don't know what they bring to your future and what they don't. But I do know that the time that I had with them, it was a great marriage. The children know that, you know, their mother wasn't shacking, that the boys know to marry their wives. My daughter knows to get married to hold out. Amen? Because how I carry myself and how they see their father do for me. But if I didn't endure what I endured and God didn't get me through it, you wouldn't believe nothing that's coming out my mouth right now. You would think that I'm jiving. But because of the things that I went through, because of the struggle that you have seen me go through, you know this is real. You know only by the grace of God that I'm standing here. Amen? So remember, it's not for you all the time. Sometimes it's for who's watching you. Many are the afflictions, but the Bible says he rescues you from all, not some, not maybe, from all. And look how the Bible never lies. The Bible says that the Lord will make your enemies your footstools. How did he turn Paul? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for this revelation. Thank you, Lord. How did he turn Paul? Saul, who later name was Paul, who was the enemy, who was crucifying Christians. How did he turn them and he ended up being their footstool? Hallelujah. He turned Paul into the Christian's footstool. He was the voice of the Christians. He turned the enemy into an ally who ended up willing to die for the word of Christ. There's nothing that is impossible with God. There's nothing that is impossible with God. But you have to trust. You have to believe him. You have to believe in the word. Just like you can keep believing those no good people that keep doing you dirty day in and day out. Trust in him. You have nothing to lose and everything to gain. You have nothing to lose and everything to gain. Trust me. I am living proof. That's why I put that post that I put up last night. You can say what you want about the word of God. But what are you going to do with me? What are you going to do with me? The person that had an encounter. The person that seen miracles in day in and day out. The person that allows the Holy Spirit to lead her and reside in her. What are you going to do with me? What are you going to do with me? What are you going to do with my children who believe in God? Who times keep me going? What are you going to do with me? What are you going to do with me? Huh? Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm getting beside myself because y'all don't know. But if y'all get a hold, y'all would know what I'm speaking. Y'all would get it because I'm telling you, Jesus is real. This walk is real. This that you see, life is real. Look at Trump. Look at all of the things that's going on. It's in the Bible. It's not a game. It's not a game. After a while, you're going to have to choose. Amen. 
Father Jesus, I come to you right now, Lord, and I thank you for this powerful word that you gave us. Lord, I thank you, that, and I pray that it may resonate in the spirits and the hearts of everybody that's watching. I pray that everybody that's watching be compelled to want to know you, that they won't be stuck on religion and the things to do, but they will be stuck on relationship, that they can have a real encounter off the strength of their household, that they might see your face and seek your face and stop seeking your hand, but seeking your face and knowing that when they see Seek your face. Everything at hand is at and, and, and will be there. It's everything that they need will be there. It's already done in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray that you restore families. I pray that all of the lost children that have that have astrayed, Father Jesus, from you. I pray that you give them a vision, Father Jesus. I pray that I pray that they unite with their families. I pray that you give the peace to the mothers and the fathers whose hearts are so heavy because of the children, because of the things that their children are out here in the streets doing. I pray that you I pray that you give them the faith to know that you can turn it all around as they present their request to you and continue to pray to you. I pray that you continue to strengthen us. I pray that every need that we have, whatever it is that you meet it. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you that we came together. We thank you that no matter what this country shows, no matter what this nation does, that we're still in a nation that we can come together on Facebook Live and that we can pray and that we can speak the word of God freely and won't be ridiculed and won't be stoned for it, won't be captured for it. So we thank you for just having the, just blessing us with freedom. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. God bless you guys. I pray in my soul so that this blessed you it's not about you it's not about you all the time it's about the person who is watching and whatever that you are enduring whether it's sickness whether it's bills that need to be paid a cheating spouse whatever it is know that God has your back I can't wait to next Tuesday to see what God has um you know to speak through me Keep your temple pure because this is where the Holy Spirit resides. God bless you and have a blessed day.